Today is a day for fun and experimentation. Here I have a snap-on pressure transducer and that's the part number there and here is the adapter to hook it to the Vera scan tool. Now I bought these brand new I bought them oh well over, but um, these hook to the snap-on Varus and uh, I don't have a Varus. Um, I, I had a Fluke 97 scope uh, for 20 plus years, but I barely used it for diagnosis at all because um, at the transmission shop it just wasn't that necessary. Uh, I played with it a lot and, and uh, um, but eventually I hooked it up to something incorrectly and I fried it. So it became a gift to a guy who was an electronics hobbyist. He thought he might fix it or maybe send it off to be fixed. But regardless, I have a Pico scope now. Um, I bought this one when I worked at the shop that had, and they had the Varus. So I could use the scope on that. But I never once hooked this to a car. This was brand new, never been used. So my project for the day is to try and get this thing to hook to my Pico and use it to Producto and use it as a pressure transducer for Pico. Now I tried selling this online. I put it on one of the diagnostician forums online and um, I had one guy contact me from Australia and said he would take it and then once he looked up shipping he said no thanks because the shipping was a little bit uh, expensive and uh, I don't blame him for that but uh, I kind of don't understand why somebody with a Varus wouldn't want to buy this stuff but it doesn't matter. I'm going to make it work with my Pico. I think this thing cost between these two items six or seven hundred dollars if I remember right. It was a lot of money and um, I was going to sell that and apply it to the cost of buying a WPS pressure transducer from Pico but since this ain't going to sell I might as well put it to use. So the first step used is to get it connected to the cylinder. So um, let me see this has a uh, looks like a quarter inch pipe thread there on the end of it let me go see what I have this is my um, adapter hose that goes to my compression gauge it's a snap-on and that'll screw into most of the Volkswagens this will screw in where the spark plug goes on most of the Volkswagens we work on and I figure I can use this coupled with that to do in cylinder pressure testing so uh, what I need here is something to hook to that that'll screw into that. Here I have some stuff that's female so that ain't gonna work. That'll probably work right there. This is the common airline fitting that we have that will hooked that will hook to right there but it looks like that has a larger hole and obviously the quarter inch pipe thread ain't gonna fit in there so I need to get a reducer. I'm going to run across the street to the hardware store and see if they have anything. Well this is what I got over at the hardware store. I think that's going to work for us. I've already trial fitted it. It does screw into the fitting and into the transducer. So there's a fitting in that. And there's the transducer screwed into that. And of course that fits into my compression gauge hose and that'll screw into the cylinder. Now I've heard that uh, this having a rubber thing here might uh, flex a little bit and affect your readings but if you compare it to a known good then that's all with the same tool then it's, uh, it's a non-issue. I'll get some wrenches to tighten this up and our, our next challenge is going to be getting our wiring to our transducer to hook to our Pico. Okay, I've been, I've been looking at this and it took me a while to make this decision, but I went ahead and cut it. And um, after I cut it, I stripped these wires. And if I, when I read across this, it did say it was 5 volts. And it does say supply voltage 4.75 to 5 volts. Now I'm kind of an electronic hobbyist, and I'm pretty sure I could take a 9 volt battery and use a little electronic regulator and and uh, make it regulate it down to 5 volts and run this off of it. That's probably what I'm going to have to do. I'm a little concerned with which which of these is going to be power and ground and signal return. I mean, it, uh, hopefully Snap-on's logical and made red the power and black the ground and white the signal return. 
I did do some ohm checking from here and here and through here and I happen to know with the Varus that uh, this this one right here is the the signal wire that hooks to the oscilloscope so I was able to confirm that this is the signal wire so if snap-on is logical and makes this the power and this the ground then we can uh, know where to hook our stuff to okay I kinda wanna leave building a regulator for another day I'm going to try and get this experiment going. So the idea I had is to use the 5 volts off of this sensor right here in order to run my pressure transducer. I'm going to back probe this and, and uh, see if it has 5 volts on it. I'm going to see if I can use that as the power source for the transducer. And there's 5 volts coming from that sensor. So I'm going to hook a, a red lead to this 5 volts. And then this black lead to the battery. And that should provide me with uh, 5 volt power and a ground to run the transducer. Let me get the coil out of here. In order to use this on a uh, oscilloscope with a transducer, you have to take the Schrader valve out of the end of the adapter here. That's only for if you're using a compression gauge. Hose adapter from my compression gauge. Transducer on it. And here's where I need to be a little bit careful. I need to make sure I don't short these together, but the red wire here for the 5 volt reference to power the transducer. And the black wire here to provide it with a ground. And I'll probably tape these up to where I, they can't short together. Okay, I've taped up the power and ground. And this is the A channel from my Pico scope. And we'll start the car and see what happens. Now, normally you'd want to disable the injector, but uh, this is a direct injected car, meaning the injectors are way underneath the intake manifold, and you can't disable the injector. The spark is in control for the cylinder. I've uh, got the transducer in because coils out and it's unplugged so you don't have to worry about that but let me crank the engine and see what happens well actually I'm gonna start the engine and see what happens I want to point out how much that rubber hose is making the pressure transducer jump. You can see there it's just each compression stroke is pushing it up and down. But I was able to get a pattern that I feel like is correct. Secondary seems to be inducing some uh, spikes in there. 
Let me pause that and we'll look at it better. Shut the car off. Okay, I kind of have the pattern that I was expecting now, and let me zoom in. I'm not going to try to like explain this because I do cannot claim to be an expert at all, but I do know that you can drag these rulers over and put that on top dead center, and that on top dead center, and. I had to change that to 720. It pulled up as 360 automatically, and I just clicked on it and changed that to 720. But honestly, we should probably flip these around. I'll move that one over here. Move this one over here. That changes it into degrees, and Pico does the math for you automatically with regards to changing it from the degrees of camshaft rotation. Then down here in the rulers, hopefully you guys can see that, you change this to 4, and that kind of shows you what your four strokes should be. Now obviously I don't know what this pressure actually is. Um, this is only relative and that meaning you if you'd put it on a known good car and then check a problem car because my pressure transducer is snap-on and my scope is Pico so you can't you know if I was using the WPS I could just do the drop-down menu and select WPS uh, right here and uh, it would sh drop in the pressures automatically and if I had all snap-on equipment with a snap-on transducer then I could do the same thing but maybe there's a way I can figure that out I'll save that for another video but uh, maybe if I um, apply a certain pressure to the transducer then I can figure out what voltage is what pressure and kind of go from there but it's been fun. Maybe I can use this inf uh, known good information to diagnose another car. I do have two um, of these engines here with uh, misfire problems, so maybe uh, something might apply to those, but um, I'm going to keep playing with it. Okay, I finished up the pressure transducer tests on the CC. Uh, I went ahead and took a cranking waveform and an idle waveform, snap throttle waveform, and a uh, coast down after snap throttle waveform uh, to have a known good in my library. Be sure to watch some of these guys' videos. If this video helped you make your snap-on transducer work with your Pico scope, then click the like button. And uh, if you want to financially contribute to the continued production of these videos, and find the donate icon on my website at www.kansascitytdi.com. If you want to watch some more of my videos, there'll be one right there and one right there. And don't forget to subscribe.